The Earthquakes made Major League Soccer history on Saturday night at Spartan Stadium, finishing up the home portion of the 2005 schedule while also clinching the Supporters' Shield and honoring an Earthquakes legend. Get all the interviews, highlights, and action right here. This is Quakes Insider. It was the last home game of the regular season for the Earthquakes on Saturday, October 8th, as expansion club Real Salt Lake came to town looking to avoid becoming the latest victims in the Quakes' record home unbeaten streak. Moments before the game started, the Quakes learned that the New England Revolution had tied, ensuring that for the first time ever, San Jose would be the home of the Supporters' Shield given to the team that finishes the regular season with the best record in MLS. A win or tie would complete the Quakes unbeaten season at home, something that no team in MLS history had ever accomplished. And despite missing U.S. national team players Wade Barrett, Brian Ching, Danny Caleb, and Ricardo Clark, Venezuelan national team forward Alejandro Moreno, and the suspended Eddie Robinson, the Quakes reconfigured lineup came out strong in the first half. And in the 38th minute, Dwayne De Rosario showed once again why he is the leading candidate for MLS MVP. Here's De Rosario using his speed, trying to lay it off, ball is loose, shot is in! From his backside for the eighth time this year, De Rosario puts San Jose up 1-0. Well, you got it. Well, um... I actually tried to pass it to Mullen, and uh, I think it was Dunstead hit it with his left knee, and um, he scrambled it with the defender, and I, I saw the ball just sitting there, and you know, I, you know, it was there, it's just sitting for me, and um, you know, I kind of just swung it towards the net, and and, and luckily we went in, and um, you know, for me it was a, you know, it was, it was a, it was a good, it was a, it was a great goal to to, to start us off. Now on the other hand, what happened? Six minutes later, a rookie made his mark for the Quakes giving San Jose a 2-0 advantage heading into halftime. Play through to Nash. Nash turning, shot in hand! On a beautiful play through that time from Cerritos. Nash beat Nolly backside, 2-0. Uh, I made a, you know, kind of diagonal run. Rano played in my foot. You know, I took a touch to trap it, pushed it aside, and uh, hit it low and hard, far post, and found the side netting. In his first MLS start, scoring a goal was just icing on the cake for Julian Nash. Uh, it was an awesome feeling, you know, and I just came out and I felt like I had something to prove. This is my, you know, a good opportunity for me to show what, you know, show what I can do in a regular game. And I was just thankful to have the opportunity. But just when it appeared the Quakes were cruising, disaster struck in the 64th minute. Ball played in. Boy, everybody. And in! And in! Everybody got his first career goal. That's Unsad just that hates it, but everybody stopped and the ball just. Just a, a ball, I mean, it's just how the coaches always want you to do is cross it so that if uh, no one touches it, it goes in the far corner. And, um, you know, my shot was away, and unfortunately. Um, you know, I, I thought uh, someone was going to be able to head it away, but they didn't get to it and, and stuck in the far post. I don't know what I was thinking, man. I, was, I don't know. That's, that's a good question. I'm, I'm going to look at the video and try to figure out come an come explanation for that one. Dude. I, uh, I don't know. You know, totally my fault. Um, and I uh, don't know what else to say. <laughs> you one game to go. With Salt Lake turning up the pressure, the expansion club got the equalizer on a volley by Andy Williams in the 73rd minute. Super sub far side making his run to the box. Crosses back. Williams shot. Goal! Andy Williams levels the match in the 73rd minute. 
it's two different halves. I mean, um, you know, the first half I thought we played pretty well. We got two good results. Second half I thought we could have had, you know, one or two more. They get it, you know, a, a weird goal, kind of a, off a weird play, and then, uh, you know, obviously they're looking to get some sort of result because they, they don't think they had to win it, you know, on the road all year. Um, so they're trying to get some sort of result. So unfortunately we came out with the tie, but you know it's a point, so we'll take it. Good early ball from Fitzpatrick. Look at this service. Tar Tarly really kind of just going straight to goal, but a good cutback by Watson. He hits it first time right to the side net. It's hard to tell exactly what happened, but great work from Jamie Watson here as he just hesitates long enough to freeze the defender. It's a beautiful cross off and a good first. Despite a late game push, the Quakes were not able to get the game winner, ending the match tied at two and ending the season with an unblemished 9-0-7 record at home. The first time any team in the history of Major League Soccer has finished the regular season without a loss in their home stadium. I can't, I can't complain, you know, and I won't, because uh, to go undefeated at home during the regular season is a, is a pretty good thing. I don't think a lot of people would have, would have pegged us to do that or to finish top, so uh, it's all positives tonight. You know, happy with the way we played for about 60, 70 minutes. Definitely on top of them. We could have scored a couple more goals. Uh, you know, we defended well, played very well. The guys that stepped in and played were, were good. And then, you know, Salt Lake kind of crept back into the game. An unfortunate goal. Uh, pretty soft as, as, as far as I could tell in talking to the guys it was. And then uh, it became a little bit of a run and gun match after that because they got some energy, kept on going. We all, you know, Brian had a good chance at the end there. But, uh, you know, 2 2. I mean, obviously you're upset because you lose the lead. But we do know that we, you know, we won the Supporters Shield. We've undefeated home. Two little pieces of, uh, you know, accomplishments this year that are uh, still guys to be proud of. So, you know, very happy with, uh, you know, just the way we approached the game tonight because then the guys could have maybe took their foot off the gas. They came out firing. And, uh, you know, with, with what happened in, uh, with New England and whatever else, you know, just to, to, uh, to clinch the overall record, I mean, it's a, it's a great accomplishment for these guys. I told myself, be proud of what you're doing, but we still have a little ways to go. So let's not get too carried away. The Quakes celebrated the Supporters' Shield and finishing the regular season with the best record in the league. We're not done, but be proud, right? Supporters' Shield, well done, fellas. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it means a lot to this team. You know, we've we've gone through a lot of stuff. This team, uh, no one ever thought that we'd be at this point. You know, at the beginning of the year, they thought, okay, we put some players together. It was a new team and. But uh, Dominic did well on organizing us, and uh, the players did really well. And again, you're gonna you see this team scoring from all angles and all positions. So again, it's hard to defend us. So again, that just uh, portrayed on how we uh, did for the rest of the season and how we ended up with the support shield. While it was a historic game for the Quakes, it also marked the return to the lineup of Brad Davis, out since August 20th with a left groin strain. Uh, it's tough to get back into the swing of things, you know, but, uh, you know, I was thankful Dom put me in that early and let me get that many minutes in, you know, I wasn't even expecting that, but, you know, to get out there and run around and, you know, be part of the team and to know I can go out there and kick a ball again, is uh, it feels pretty good, so. Saturday was also the first MLS game in almost two years for forward Roger Levesque, who has been on loan to the USL First Division Seattle Sounders winning the title with them before returning to San Jose and entering the game in the second half. Um, it was definitely great, you know, to come on late in the game. Um, and it was a little disappointing that we gave up the two late goals to tie 2-2. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I was excited to be out there. Came close to getting that, uh, getting the goal uh, to give us a win, but uh, maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, uh, Seattle was great. Um, you know, winning a championship is always a lot of fun. Uh, and I got to play a lot, which is good. Uh, that game experience, there's, um, you can't replace that uh, as far as getting better. So, you know, and it turned out great last week when we won a championship. So that's champ champagne twice in a week for me. With just one game remaining on October 15th in L.A. against the hated Galaxy before the playoffs start, the Quigs are ready and happy with their home field advantage. You know, we think we're very difficult to beat here. Uh, obviously, uh, it's a tight field. It's uh, the fans are right on top of you, which makes it feel even tighter. And we're used to it. We're very comfortable here, and uh, it, it's a tough place to play. And, and right now, the way things have worked out, uh, to get to the MLS Cup final, you've got to go through San Jose, and uh, that's what we. That's our whole goal. The 32 games was to make sure that we had that advantage going into the playoffs. We've done that. 
you know, it's a, it's a game for the playoffs, and especially against LA, which is, you know, a, 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 like a rivalry. And uh, of course, going to play in LA, we want to stamp our authority and want to show them that, you know, we could uh, beat them in the Home Depot Center and uh, put a lot of pressure on them going into the playoffs. And I'm sure they want to do the same thing, you know, going into the playoffs. They want to come out and, you know, battle for, for it. So it won't be an easy game. But um, we're going to go in there and keep our game and, you know, play play the way we play. And, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully things work out. After the Quakes made history on the field, the club honored retiring legendary defender Troy Dyack in a moving post-game ceremony. The Beast played eight memorable seasons for the Quakes, and the 2001 MLS All-Star and U.S. Olympian always saved his best moments for his true home field, Spartan Stadium. The Quakes honored Dyack with a framed jersey and the special commemorative Earthquakes belt buckle for the Cowboy from Tracy. Dyack once again brought down the house in a fitting end to a special regular season. On this week's injury report, Wade Barrett is questionable with a left hamstring strain. Ronald Cerritos is probable with a left ankle sprain. And Brad Davis is probable with a left groin strain. Troy Dyack and Craig Weibel remain on the season-ending injury list. Earthquakes fans, don't miss the last game of the regular season on Saturday, October 15th, when the Quakes travel to L.A. to face the Galaxy at 7 p.m. at the Home Depot Center. Watch the game live on Telemundo 48 or listen on 1590 AM KLIV. And Quakes fans, don't get shut out of the playoffs as the Earthquakes host Game 2 of the Western Conference Semifinals on Saturday, October 29th at 7 p.m. at Spartan Stadium. Good tickets are still available, but going fast. Contact any Ticketmaster outlet or the Earthquakes ticket office at 408-985-GOLD. Thanks for watching, Quakes fans. This is Quakes Insider.